within every new franchisor, there's a story and there's a journey, there's a founder. And today we're gonna to speak with Jean Ariano, Vanity Fur, and Jean's a new franchisor and she's creating a special franchise system. Jean, we're gonna have a fun conversation today. I'm excited. Well, and if I could set this up, right? So I'm biased, you're a client, but you're an amazing human. We have franchisors listening to this, entrepreneurs that are thinking about taking the step into franchising, franchisees, brokers. And one of the most amazing things is, is that when we first met, you were 150% committed to franchising. I mean, and when we spoke about building the brand, helping others, you're one of the few where you came in and you said, Charles, I want to take care of my team and I'm ready to sell. And, and it was very favorable. My existing vanity fur to the people that worked with me so they could run that business. And I'm going to hundred percent commit to franchising. So what was that like in that decision-making process? I have to be honest, initially, I did not think that I was going that route. I got into franchising and I went to the IFA and just sat at a round table and learned that I could present this to my existing employees. So I came back and I presented it. And the, the employees that were with me at that point, six, seven and eight years, I thought they were going to be the ones, but it didn't turn out that way. The ones that were with me one and two years were all about jumping on, understood the value of getting into this franchise system early. And so then we made it happen. And, and yeah, half of my corporate territory went to franchise number one, and she's doing really well. Well, and the good news too, like smart entrepreneur, a lot of times you discounted my legal advice. Oh, yeah, so Charles is calling me out right now. Charles, no, 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 what what Gina, not to do. no, it's not even what not to do. What I appreciate and admire, right? There's legal advice, but you were so committed to the people that were going to become your first franchisees and so committed and passionate about this journey that I totally respect it and I praise you for doing that. And not many people do. It's like when you're halfway into something. You don't achieve anything. So, so I, 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 it was, it was fun to watch that part of the process. Gina. Yeah. And then I saw you at a convention or we were at, I don't even remember where we were, but you said, well, you didn't take my advice. And I said, I probably wasn't going to listen to you at that point. Right. I, was, I was both feet in. I'm still both feet in. Um, I do see the value of your advice. Yeah. But you did the right thing. So, Vanity Fur, mobile dog grooming. We know, I mean, industry-wise, there's a rising tide, the, you know, demographics and, you know, it, it demand for service. So, so that's tremendous. Um, you have your first two franchisees up and running. Yeah. So what's next? I know you've taken a very methodical approach and you want to be very slow about who you onboard and building that sort of tribe that you have there at Vanity Fur, what, what are you envisioning or what are you focusing on next as, as now you transition to more broader uh, attraction and onboarding of franchisees? Well, I think it sort of starts here. Um, you know, I need to start with my story and really why I got into franchising. And I really need to get that out so that people out there that are looking into franchising, whether it's mobile dog grooming or whatever they're looking into, but really kind of explain why I did this, why my franchisees, the current ones got into it and why future, you know, folks want to make that jump to get into franchising. So it's, it's telling the story. It's just telling the brutal, honest story of the struggle and why getting into business ownership, you know, it can be life changing. Well, Jean, right? So, I mean, I hate to say this, but we're all going to be dead one day, right? Yeah. And, but, but it is about life changing and, and enjoying your life and doing and working hard, right? So how did you even get involved? Like why dog grooming? What brought about Vanity Fur? 
oh my gosh, I never thought I would be in dog grooming. That's first. I was in, you know, upper management and really fun restaurant concepts. Um, and just always went to the next concept because just wasn't really satisfied there and went on to the next one. The final one in the restaurant industry, I was general manager for improv comedy clubs. I always had a blast at anything I was, you know, working, doing. So now I'm, you know, paying these comedians, you know, I, well, first of all, I'm getting paid to laugh. That was, that was a cool gig, but still something was just like, this is, there's something else, you know, and then paying these headliners, you know, my annual salary just made me take a hard look at listening to that voice in me that kept saying, well, like, why am I not happy that I'm, I'm laughing for a living? Why am I not? And it wasn't even happy. It was just not satisfied. And it was seeing other people having these lives, you know, coming into these restaurants, you know, shopping all day, just, they had all these time freedoms, you know, I, I was working nights and weekends and I really just did not know what I was going to do. And I left improv. My husband thought I was crazy. Everybody thought it was crazy. And, and I was facing a promotion there. So, you know, I left and I did not know what I was going to do. I fell back to bartending, which I did in my, you know, when I was 21, 22, in this year of frantic, oh my God, what am I going to do? It's time to grow up. It's time to figure out what I'm going to do for my adult, you know, rest of my life. Because just being in the restaurants wasn't it. And, and I just ne never even thought about business ownership. I just created a card and, you know, bartending, Taco Tuesday, passing out my card, a couple regular, you know, talking to them about it. And, and a gentleman said, you need to meet my wife. She's a mobile dog groomer. And I'm like, I don't even know what mobile dog grooming is. I didn't even have my dogs at the time. I just didn't even occur. But I did want to do something I was passionate about, which was either cooking, gardening or, um, you know, or pets. And so then I met her, went out with her for a day and I was just like sold on so many levels of what this was, went to pet school or pet grooming school and it's built, they built my first uh, mobile and 2010, I'm a mobile dog groomer. <laughs> and so begins Vanity Fur. And, and so 2023, <clears throat> you're, you're looking back, your team, territories operating in on this franchise journey, which is going well. I mean, how does this make you feel when you think backwards a little? Oh my gosh, just all the things that solved for me, like before even franchising, when, when I was trying to figure that out and I was in that year of what am I going to do? You know, I felt at that point, it was kind of too late to go to college and, you know, the story you're supposed to go to college, you, you know, you become a nurse, you become a lawyer <laughs> and then you go your route. But I, that just wasn't my route. I, I, you know, I didn't go to all, all of the college. I, I didn't, so I didn't really, wasn't really set up to have that professional career. And it didn't even occur to me to start a business. But when it did, and, and by the way, a little backstory, I had a personal experience in uh, when I was 29. And I developed severe anxiety panic disorder. It was a very problematic scenario. And I am not even kidding you. I was in in counseling about it, it was, it, it, it was affecting my life. And in that year, and I can't even believe that I, I left in that year, I was just like trying to figure everything out. And when I started the business, changed. Like it changed because my focus was now just on the business, on the dogs, on the clients. And then, then year two, year three, and then I realized the demand and that we we're gonna be better. Like, and then I just knew franchising back then when I went to grooming school, I really did. And I don't know why, because I had said to my grooming school teacher who was building more mobiles and kind of creating her own competition. I said, why don't you franchise? And she said, well, that's crazy. That's like six figure investment. That is so much time that, that just, that's ludicrous. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well maybe. Well, that was 2010 and 2017, I started to really look into making vanity fur, sewing up everything, buttoning it up, making it right, systematizing it to where it could be franchised. And then I found you in 2021 and we started 
you know, doing all the legal things they had to do to get there. And, you know, so, so man, life changing. And that was just the mobile grooming business. That wasn't even the really fun, very exciting franchise side of things, which I, I love. Which I, I love too. I would have never guessed any anxiety to sort of years ago. I mean, we're at conferences, you're just absorbing everything, building. And, and, and so it comes up often, right? I mean, it's a great industry. And for me, when, when we speak with franchisees, what they look for, in addition to a great industry, is a great team and, and leadership and, and joining a tribe. So how do you view vanity for, in terms of the opportunity for someone who joins the system? I mean, first, we're all going to be super pet loving people. And so right there, it's already kind of an automated. I mean, if you have a dog or if you love dogs, if you go to a dog park or if you, you just go walk into a pet, you know, at one of those big box office places and you see, a, a, you know, a dog there, you can just strike up conversation. And that's who we are. I mean, even even. It, Whatever is happening, we still always have the common ground of what we all love, and that is the pets. We're all, we all nerd out on dog and cat photos. That's constant. I mean, that's just, you know, we're always having fun with what we're doing. So, you know, bonus that we get to play with, like, dogs and cats for a living, and bonus that the employees love the dogs and cats, so they're, they are with us, you know, six, seven, eight years. Bonus that our clients love us and our raving fans because – we're all crazy pet passionate people. And so it, it just resonates with the, you know, the culture, you say culture, culture, but you know, dog, the, just loving the dogs and the passion for, you know, dogs and cats that just creates its own culture, you know, and then that they're really cool people. So, you know, and we're looking for those folks to be owners with us that, you know, we can all just sit around, you know, a place and, you know, have a beer and, and talk about our dogs. <laughs> like That's who we want. We want you to have fun at this. I know along the way too, as we were developing the franchise offering, your focus on territories, territory sizes, giving your franchisees the ability to scale and over time add more service vehicles. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that this business is something that they could start in a supplemental type of way if they're afraid to jump all the way in and they're still holding on to that job or you know career that they're not totally satisfied because they wouldn't be if they're looking at you know anything in the franchise world or they've googled you know how to start my own pet business or how to start a business in general they're looking and they just need to listen to this you know this thing but they you know they could start one vehicle and they could grow to their second you know they could grow up to 20 they can grow as many vehicles and add to their income, how they see fit over, over the duration of being an owner with Vanity Fur. Which I, I, I think is, is, is critical. And, and I think with everyone, you know, a, a big plus to the business model is recurring revenue, right? Once you have that customer acquisition, there's that repeat business and the referral business and over time scalability in terms of your customer base and I think a big advantage of what Vanity Fur offers is a territory that you can scale and grow into over time and go from, you know, maybe from income, supplemental income to income replacement to a ton more. So I, I think that was a smart decision. Absolutely. And, and speaking of the recurring, you know, I've been in business for 13 years. We are literally on our second, third generations of pets, you know, that, they stay with us and, and the clients, you know, all of a sudden it's just word of mouth, you know, and, and, uh, you know, keeping up with the business <laughs> because it is, you know, they see the, the wrap vehicles and they think they see one groomer constantly running frantically throughout like our territory, all the cities. And, uh, I'll go to the grocery store and, and, you know, we have clients everywhere. So, you know what the cashier at the grocery store here, she, every single time I go through the line, she's like, Oh my gosh, this is Vanity Fur. She runs Vanity Her groomer, the groomers are great. And like, you know, everybody's just raving fans. And then it's all word of mouth, word of mouth, because they really like love what we provide to them. We go to their homes, you know, every two to eight weeks. So 
We're always there. So Jean, the, which an important question that comes up, if I know nothing about the dog grooming industry, like you did, however long ago, did Vanity Fur work for those people that want to leave corporate America, go into the pet grooming business and scale it up? Yes. And let me, let me just say why it would even be better than most businesses. Because I was in the restaurant industry for 12 and a half years. And I worked in lower, you know, like dollar, kind of like value for your money. And then higher end places. And then like the, the, there was many, many employees you had to hire. You know, I was always hiring. I hired hundreds and hundreds of employees. Here, you just need one or two. And so it's just a little, little bit at a time. You're not overwhelmed with, I have to get a whole team right tomorrow and open the key to that place that I have to be at every morning at 8 a.m., whether clients, customers come or not. You know, here you know. So you know your business. You know how to schedule your one or two employees. Um, you know, the client, you see your business, your book of business months, and if not a year out. So, you know, it's this is a way to kind of tiptoe in and, until you're ready to immerse yourself. I think it's an important point too, which is part of the vanity for a difference, which is that you are building the model where your franchisees can scale, where they can start and scale as opposed to other systems where they don't have that scalability. They can't start slow and become business builders over time as they ramp up. That's important. And I know that's important that, that you focus on that along the way. So for our subscribers and listeners who are entrepreneurs thinking about franchising, what I tell people often is that um, you have to do research and there's great people in the franchise world and there's others that want to sell you on the concept of franchising and, and sort of rely on what you don't know. Not in a bad way, but it's just life. And what I love about you, like you show up all the time. You're at conferences, you're at events, you're looking to find better ways to support your franchisees. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs out there who haven't made the leap or are thinking about it? What's some advice you could share with them? Well, first, I just want to say, I did not even know that I was an entrepreneur. I just knew there was something inside telling me to do something and I wasn't listening for a long time. And, and then when I took the jump, that's all you have to do. It's kind of like working out. If I show up at the gym, eventually I'm going to get on the treadmill. I might pick up a dumbbell. I might get better. I might improve. It's really the jump. And, and even if you're consider if you know, you're an entrepreneur, I mean, then you're just doing your homework. Just, you know, don't, you know, I, I'm risk averse. You know, I know a lot of people like my husband's one of them, you know, like a risk is a terrible thing to do, but he sees the value of, the risks that I have taken. And now he can say, yeah, you made a good decision. You know, it obviously has all worked out, but because I showed up, so you just have to show up. You have to make that jump, do your homework, but don't get stuck in that, you know, paralysis of, you know, that, you know, analytical, oh my gosh, but, but what if, but what if, but what, cause you can, but what, what if yourself to death? And, you know, that was, that's why it's just, it's like my anxiety. It's, it's, it's you. I have anxiety all the time. I had it today before seeing you and, <laughs> you, and, you know, just doing all of these things. It, it's, it's a little nerve wracking. We're live. If I mess up, it's live. So, but it, same with the conferences, it can be very overwhelming, but unless you do it, you, you're going to just regret not doing it. And then once you get in it 10 minutes after you're fine and you're just sitting back doing a podcast with Charles and it's no big deal, but same with franchising and that you have a whole support staff of people that are going to hold your hand. So there's nothing to really fear with the franchise side, in my opinion. If you project forward five years from now and you look back and you see your franchise system, your franchisees, how are you going to define success? What are you going to look for as those markers and what's going to value to you five years from now? Well, I would want many franchisees in the system that all support one another. But really what I want for them is to have at least four mobiles, at least, 
to get them out of their previous, wherever they're stuck right now, and that they are enjoying business ownership like I did, and that they get to enjoy, when I had four mobiles, just four mobiles, I was fully, I was absent, you know, I, I was going on vacations, I was working from home, I was never in traffic again. I, you know, I just want that for people. I want them to experience what I worked years and years and years to achieve. But I didn't know, like nobody put it in a box and rolled out the red, you know, vanity fur carpet and said, you should do this because I didn't know. And so, but when I did it, I wanted this for, I want this for more people. I want this for so many more people because you don't know how really enjoyable it is until you, you know, it's still hard work, but you're probably already working hard where you are. So anyways, that's what I want. Five years from now, I want to look back and say, all of these owners are having really great lifestyles with their families, going on vacations, enjoying themselves. And they're not as stressed as they were back when they were working for somebody else, making their money for them. They're making it for themselves and their legacy and their, their families. So and that's what I want. And there's probably more in there. I just can't think of it on the fly right now. <laughs> Jean, I love like, I, I mean, for you to say you were nervous before this, uh, this video and, 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 and the passion you have. I'm looking forward five years from now, we're gonna have an amazing conversation and, and I'm glad we got to spend some time together. Me too, Charles, thank you.